My name is Benjamin Lapp. Just call. Just call me Ben. I was born in June 1907 in the town of Sheffield, England. My father was a tailor and in 1920, in December 20, we left England and came out to Australia. And then when I was 13 and a half, what we had to decide was whether I'd go to school in a new country with a new school. So my father allowed me to make my choice and I joined him as an apprentice middle tailor. <laughs> I met Jean in about 1933-34. There was no sign of engagement, marriage. <clears throat> it was time to go to war. <clears throat> Although I was 33, 34, matter of fact, before I left Australia. I had my own little business and had to look after a sick father. I still decided, and my father agreed that I should join up. We were Jewish, not practicing. I hadn't been in a synagogue for 10, 12 years, but we were still Jewish, and that's why. We left in December 1940. As a matter of fact, to be truthful, before, the day before I left, we closed the business and Dad was in his little room, little house. <clears throat> but to my very, very good friend, Jean, I took a box of chocolates. <laughs> and it was Jean's mother that decided that we would got engaged. <laughs> and when I was in the Middle East, I got a letter from my sister, my only sister who was like my mother, she was younger but then, <clears throat> angry with me that I got engaged to Jean and I hadn't even told her. <laughs> and when we came back in 1942, we got married. We had a five-day honeymoon. <clears throat> we trained for jungle warfare, went to New Guinea, that was like hell, <laughs> hell on earth. We moved into a position that had already been occupied by the Yanks, and they had dug the trenches. <sighs> and believe it or not, when I tried to dig down a little further, I dug out the skeleton of one of our fellows, one of the Yanks. who had evidently lived and died in that blessed trench. It was... Oh. Jean was a, a bubble of joy and... <laughs> why she felt for a little... <laughs> old-fashioned tale I like Ben Love, I don't know. It wasn't a matter of, <laughs> of being, you know, deeply in love or whatever you call it. Maybe we were past that. <clears throat> but we, we just wanted to settle down together, maybe have a family. When I look at a photo of Jean, I feel so sad for her that I'm sitting here and she was taken with this cursed dementia at the prime of her life, you know. And when you have lived for 18 years with a person and you've known them for 30 years, 
40 years. <clears throat> it's quite a shock. She couldn't reason anything anymore. This lively, laughing, lovely woman was now needed to care for the rest of her life until she took a stroke. Down to Motorvale Hospital. And that's where she died. Eleven years ago. I would say to keep active, both bodily and in the brain, because it's a well-known fact that if you sit and do nothing, not only will your body deteriorate, but your brain matter seizes up too. And I would say to people coming into retirement, go out there and volunteer. You can help others, but believe me, you will be helping yourself just as much. If I were a rich man, die no day, no die no day, no dum. All day long I biddy biddy bum. If I was a wealthy man, I wouldn't have to work hard. Day no day, no day, no day, no day, no day, no dum. If if I were a bitty bitty rich, I do dee do die do dee do man. You don't want any more. <laughs>